I want to show you here how to do what's commonly known as a head swap. Um, it's a good, very good skill to have um, if you do a lot of family pictures, um, newborn photography. Basically what um, I'm going to do is take um, Olivia's face here, um, most of her head, and put it on this picture here. So let's say I had a photo and I liked the full body shot or you know seeing most of her body um, but I don't like her expression here I want the smiling face so um, I'm gonna move that over very common um, in family pictures especially larger families if you have you know everyone's smiling except one kid but in another photo that child um, has a really good expression you might take that that face from that one and swap it on to um, the other photos so to do this, I have both pictures open. What I'm going to do is, um, on the one that I like here, I'm going to use the selection tool, the um, fourth one down. I'm going to select the majority of her face. It doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> and I'm also going to show you how to use the layer mask with this. Whoops, backspace a little bit. If you, if you select a little bit too much. You can just um, take a little step back. Okay, that should be good enough. Um, I'm gonna use the move tool here. And um, if I click on her and drag her over and up to the picture that I want, um, I'm, you'll see obviously um, the photo's a little bit too big. It's just the difference in the file sizes. So I need to resize that. I'm gonna pull up my transform tool. So you can hit Control T um, on a Mac computer, that would be Command T. Make sure that you hold the Shift key down when you're resizing. Um, you don't want to make her face uh, squished or too tall or whatever by pulling the side or the top. So you want to pull the corner and hold the Shift key down so it locks the ratio. Um, so I'm going to move this. And I'm going to kind of watch. I'm going to rotate it a little bit watch where her hair and everything lines up to see where I think it needs to go. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is lower the opacity a little bit to see. So you can kind of see now where she needs to be. And the size is really close. Um, I might resize it just a little bit more here. To get it a little closer. You know, you don't want her head to look too big or too small. It's going to look unrealistic. So that is about as close as it's going to get, I think. I'm going to rotate it. Rotate her just slightly. Well, not that much. Well, let's go up here and rotate it because it's not letting me do it. <clears throat> um, let's go about five here. There we go. Okay, so lining her up, and that is very close. Um, so I'm going to hit enter to get rid of that transform tool, um, and let me up the opacity a little bit. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to create a layer mask, um, which if you don't know how to do that, make sure you watch the tutorial video that is linked at the bottom um, that comes before this video that shows you how to use a layer mask. Um, I'm going to click on the layer mask here. And while that's selected, the reason we use that instead of just using the eraser tool is that that allows me to correct any mistakes I make. So if I just erase something, if I needed to add it back in, I wouldn't be able to do that. Whereas using the layer mask, I can use the brush tool, brush off the areas I don't want. Um, and if the um, area I brush off is a little bit too much, I can just use the white brush and brush, uh, brush it back on. So you lower this a bit and you can see what I've added. And what we're gonna do is just kind of blend in the new picture into the background photo. Um, so we're gonna lower the opacity of the brush to about 10. I'm going to zoom in just slightly, and I'm just going to kind of brush it off of her hair. Um, she's lucky that she has curly hair. That definitely helps. 
but things you want to look for. Obviously, the hair is pretty easy to blend. Um, you know, if there were parts of the door behind her that I picked up, I would really need to make sure that those lined up well. Otherwise, you know, the lines that are in the door um, would look, would clearly look like I did some Photoshopping. So, um, so like you can see this one right back here. So I'm going to get rid of that. So it doesn't look like some crazy detail on the door that shouldn't be there. Let's get a little bit more. I'm going to check that part of the door. I'm going to blend her hair just slightly more. And this is really important um, that you are taking a photo that is from a similar lighting and not necessarily the same setting, but if your lighting color, things like that are really off, it takes a significant amount of time to blend those in. Um, it's definitely harder to create a composite when the lighting is off. Okay. So now I'm going to check her shirt here. So I'm just, I'm clicking with my mouse and brushing this away. So each time it's at, you know, 11% opacity. You can see over here on the layer mask the areas that I've brushed off. And I'm clicking the, um, the eye here to view the layer. And then, you know, so I'm going back and just kind of checking everything to make sure that she looks like she's blended in well. So right here a little more on her jacket and neck. And I'm just kind of looking at everything. Let's check her hair a little bit more. Okay. One thing that this doesn't work um, on is when the face is turned to a different angle. So obviously you wouldn't want to take, um, if she was looking at me straight on and try to move that over, um, sometimes you can do it. It just kind of depends on on how the body's angled, um, the rest of their head, all of that. So you just have to be mindful of that. You don't want it to look unrealistic. Okay, I'm just kind of double checking everything and I'm gonna get a little bit more up here in her hair and then I think that's good. So um, the last thing you would do once you've double checked everything is just um, flatten your, your layers, merge your layers um, and save it and you're good to go. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you stay connected with Urban Rhino on social media. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and of course, subscribe to our channel. 